Who deserves space in America? Who has claim to this land, stolen from its native people not so very long ago? Right now, lots of news stories seem to imply that we need to keep people out, that America should go backwards to be great. What if Minnesota has a chance to prove something different? When I was a baby, I was adopted and sent to Glencoe, Minnesota. That same year, French filmmaker Louis Malle came to Glencoe to create a documentary about the American heartland. He interviewed a young farmer named Jim, who was worried that it might be impossible for his children to farm under policies like those put in place in the 1980s. This is Jim's son, John, who I've known for many years as Johnny Rock. John Mockentoon did find another career path in a successful body shop that sits on his parents' property. If in the farming community is dwindling every, every day. Um, it's bigger. The smaller dairy farmers are, we're losing a lot of them. There's only one in the area that still milks cows and has calves. And that's only a matter of a couple of years, a year, and they're going to be done. There's there's no money in in the dairy part of it when you're small. When you're so small, <clears throat> you'd have to have three, four, five hundred head of dairy cows just to to make it here. Um, it's sad to say, and it's sad to see it happen because I grew up with it. <clears throat> And it's gone. And I don't want to say that the, that the government doesn't care. They care. They're doing the best that they can do. I feel that they're doing the best that they can do. But there are places where I think they could improve for these smaller farmers to stay. Because that's the only thing they've ever known their entire life. And then you take their cows away. It's like family to them. They have no idea what what the workforce is about because they will, they wake up at five o'clock in the morning, they're gonna milk cows. They know what they have to do. Now you take that away from them, they have no clue what to do. Meanwhile, in downtown St. Paul, the restaurant Just Us is preparing to lose their space too. Their rent, along with the community of folks in the low-income apartments above them, is being raised 500%, so they all have to go. Just Us has hosted and supported countless local hip-hop artists, including Shanice Mason, Lieutenant Sonny. I asked Sonny what kind of space the community would be losing when Just Us is no more. The environment that was created here allows people to be true to themselves, and that's exactly what happens here. And so I've seen a lot of great things happen, you know. I, I just, I really hope that um, Just Us and other environments alike have what they need to stay in, stay in downtown, you know? Because especially downtown St. Paul, a lot of people come um, down here to work, but I think sometimes we forget that a lot of people live down here, whether they live in the apartments or whether they live on the street. People live down here, this is their home, you know? And so, you know, everybody deserves to have an outlet to say what's on their mind, you know? And a lot of times you would think, you, you, you would be surprised how much you have in common with someone who doesn't necessarily look like you or have the same background as you do, you know? Like when, you, when, we, when we put ourselves, when we label ourselves and put ourselves in classes and, you know, boxes, then it's kind of like we rob ourselves of a story that could really save our, our life, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I sure hope that downtown doesn't let this pass them by, you know? In November 2018, Peggy Flanagan became the second Native American woman to ever be elected to statewide executive office in U.S. history. A member of the White Earth Band of Ojibwe, she previously represented District 46A as a member of the Minnesota House of Representatives. She campaigned with Governor Tim Walls on the platform that everyone should have a seat at the table in their government. In Minnesota, uh we really like to talk about the value of diversity. <laughs> I am all for it. I love it. Until it actually impacts me. Um, and oftentimes, those are what I like to call who wants pie kind of moments. 
where we start to talk about race and we start to talk about issues around gender identity and we start to talk about issues of income and people freak out. And they get really uncomfortable and we switch the subject and we wanna talk about food. So we are going to have those tough conversations, those who, want, who wants pie moments and how to push through them. Um, and we are trying to figure it out. We're gonna make mistakes, we're gonna screw up, and we're gonna try to have a little bit of grace um, with each other and learn from those mistakes and talk about what went wrong and how we're going to correct it moving forward. When the villagers are faced with a moral dilemma in Stephen Sondheim's Into the Woods, the witch calls them all out on their contributions to their quandary. Then she says something that has always sent a little shiver up my spine. She tells them all, you're not good, you're not bad, you're just nice. I'd like to start asking, are we capable of being more than just nice? Is Minnesota more than just a hot dish and healthy looking Caucasian lumberjacks? Will just us be able to find a new home downtown? Will the promise of a place for everyone at the table materialize? Can we start having these tough conversations? And can we film it? Is there a way to talk about how we in Minnesota all endeavor to share this beautiful space, but include those hard questions? So maybe we can show the rest of this nation that equity, unlike pie, has an indefinite amount of pieces to go around. What if we move on from trying to be just nice and start asking, hey Minnesota, what's next? This project is supported in part by the National Endowment for the Arts on the web at arts.gov. A lot of the things t I'm talking about in the film are uncomfortable. It is uncomfortable right now in this climate to say who deserves to be here. Who deserves to have space in the United States? My name is Jess Grams and I grew up in rural Minnesota but I've mostly lived in cities. As a mixed race person, you don't really feel like you belong in any room and in a small rural town, <laughs> you know, that can be true too, and it can be true in the city. It can be true anywhere. The story I'm trying to tell is about displacement in Minnesota, and to put it in a more colloquial way, I think that it's just about space. I'm partially an indigenous native person, so I also wanted to talk about how does that connect with the native experience where displacement is their entire history in Minnesota. People of color, especially in Minnesota, are very underrepresented in the media. And I really wanted to talk about people of color living in rural areas. And I really wanted to compare some of the displacement struggles in urban and rural areas. I felt like I had to find a way to bridge that gap. Even though people say, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna eliminate the urban-rural divide. Okay. <laughs> Somebody's gotta start the, the conversation. Maybe people will be mad. Maybe people like it, I don't know, but at the very least, if they talk about it, I'll feel successful.